to have like a nerdy job, like graphics or writing for cartoons. I don't know. You know, like like on computers or something like that. I don't know. He should be a cartoon. You want to try it again with left arm, dude? He's got tattoos. He's way tougher than you. Oh, left hand. Ooh. Eddie? Wait a second, wait a second. Hold on, you're pushing me the other way. Wait, relax a second. Relax. That's, that's straight right I can't there. be more relaxed. It's straight, trust okay. me. One, two, three, three. go. go. <laughs> <laughs> They just really, you know, he's got a vibe to himself that is really, really cool. But he just kind of sits and just listens and just he hears things in his head and he just goes ahead and just builds whatever he hears around that. And then as a band, we have to figure out, you know, afterwards, okay, we really like this part, you know, this part is a little too, not, it doesn't go with the song, in our opinion, blah, blah, blah. So he's kind of very, very focused guy. And he just goes, sits down and works, works, works till like 2 or 3 in the morning till he's satisfied with what he's got. And uh, it's, actually, it's actually pretty cool to work like that. It's just like somebody gives you like a thousand really good ideas and you just like pick the right ones that go with the ones that you already had, you know, having started the recording of the song. So kind of builds and builds on top to make a really good song. And he came up with loops, production ideas that were very, very interesting. Those ideas kind of triggered um, new songs, triggered like a new direction, and that started to really make sense. It really made sense in, as a whole, like as a new record, as a, as a very exciting way to present ourselves as a band. I think going in this direction, we kind of had to think about it a little bit before we actually tried it. You know, like wh what could we do that would be different, blah, blah, blah. And then we're like, okay, let's try to do something with the kind of beats that we hear these days, blah, blah, blah and in that direction. So we figured, let's just try it. And then if it sounds weird for us then we'll pull it back and if it sounds good then we'll just keep going like there's a song like the end which is kind of a really like half and half song it's got a beat verse and a punk rock chorus i think it was a very natural thing with danger he uh i think he liked the band you know he liked uh, what the idea was what the vision was and um i guess you know like i said we, we it's not like we did like a 180 um but we added uh, a new flavor to the sound, which is why I think it sounds natural. Um, it's not like we're doing hip hop or R and B all of a sudden, but um, it definitely has a has a, a a flavor to it, you know. But it was a big challenge too to actually make it work and actually make it sound as a band mixed with those influences. So the way that we were able to make it sound genuine and sound, you know, not not so contrived was that we did it. We wrote it with him. It wasn't like, I think a lot of times people, I mean, especially someone like, someone like Nate, a lot of time his job is to make a beat, create a song, and do the whole thing, make, make the blend of sounds, make the beats, make the, the whatever you can hear out there, except for the vocals. And, the, and then the artist will sing on, on top of that. So obviously, it becomes kind of a danger song with someone else singing on it. But what we did with him is that we really co-produced from the start. We would, you know, we, we would take his beats and his sounds write something on it, we would create like a, like a kind of a base, the base of a sound and just do all that and then bring it back to the studio here in Montreal and with Dave Fortman build an entire Simple Plan song and lay that on top of that little foundation. First head of studio, a lot of stuff's gonna happen today. Uh, I think we're gonna get some, uh, get some tones, which means we're gonna try to get every uh, instrument to sound good, make sure the bass and the guitar sound good. And then as soon as we got that, then we're just going to start and recording, uh, recording some songs. Jeff would definitely be giving guitar lessons. Um, I don't know. Jeff, uh, I forgot Jeff was in the band. <laughs> Maybe he would be a, a guitar teacher. If it wasn't music related, what would Jeff do? Hmm, good question. Hi. My name is Jeff Stinko. I'm a personal trainer. I think he'd be like a real estate kind of tycoon, like running, you know, like buying buildings. And I think I'd be a teacher. I think he can't do anything. He'd be a hustler. Music teacher, and then I'd be bored, and I'd try to find something. I have no idea what Jeff would do. So day one, we have problems already. I like it. Time's broken. Yeah, Danger came in and brought a lot of those, like, 
production ideas, a lot of loops that were more R&B influenced. But yeah, the, 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 the core of the record is a rock record. Even the Danger songs kind of morphed into rock songs uh, more and more. And a lot of it had to do with our desire to just maintain who we are and, and, and kind of just wanting to be Simple Plan. Uh, but it also had a bit to do with uh, working with Dave Fortman. Um, Fortman did like records with Evanescence, with Mudvayne, kind of heavier records. And um, he's, he's really into like hearing us as a rock band. I think we wanted to, I mean, we wanted to get someone that would be able to take a sound that is a little more, you know, blend of sounds. I think that someone that was able to do that was, was Dave Fortman with Evanescence because he, you know, you listen to Evanescence, there's a lot of beats, there's a lot of synth sounds, a lot of like this, this it's like just the band itself is like a, a mix between operatic singing and metal. So I think he was someone that really came forward when we were looking for people. He was one of the guys that really seemed to get it. He was the one guy that was like, you know what, I really get what you're going with and I, w I want to be part of it. A lot of people that we, we approached were kind of thrown off by it. They were like, yeah, these songs are all good. The ones that are like rock, simple plan songs all sound, you know, I could totally see where you're going, but these songs, I don't get it. I don't know where you're going with this, and I, I really am not sure if I can pull this off. So that's what really draw, you know, kind of kind of drew us to, to to going with Dave because he was the one guy who was like, man, this mesh of sound is amazing. We knew he could achieve what we wanted, you know, the record to sound like. So uh, I think he did an amazing job. Um, I think he rules. Um, you know, uh, he's from a band called Ugly Kid Joe, and uh, I think as soon as I heard that he was from Ugly Kid Joe, I think that was it, you know, he, he had the record. Bam. Should I go with the precision bass or the precision bass? The first one. That part sounds killer. You can see what's going on as well, yeah. That's a tough question. Sure, David, wow. David? <laughs> Damn. Can David do anything else than play bass and sing? I doubt it. David would be lost somewhere. David would be traveling somewhere in the world and looking for stuff to do. I know, I got it. He'd be trying to be like a stand-up comic and he would fail miserably. <laughs> That's what he'd be doing. David has, has such a, 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 he's so good at, at, at finding little details and memorizing stuff. I guess he'd be playing bass. <laughs> I really don't see him do anything else. No, I'll tell you what. He's got the leverage on you because he's down like this, and your half your body weight's up in the air. Uh, that's that's what it was. You need to lean into that's this. That's what it was. How many different ones is it? That explains it again. Okay. I thought you. You know, you know what? I'm, I'm gonna put you straight. I'm, I'm gonna you put wanna you start straight. like this? I think I'm gonna start. You wanna start with advantage? All right. <laughs> what is the go? Three. I'm not focused. Focused. I'm not. I'm not focused. Three, two, one. Oh, here we go! <laughs> so yeah, meeting Fortman was a bit interesting because the guy just came in and was really easy going. Um, when we did pre-pro, the guy kind of let us argue between ourselves, kind of change the songs between ourselves, but didn't really um, say much at that point. And we were all like kind of a bit worried, you know? We didn't really work with him before. We haven't worked with, with him before. So he came in and we were just a bit nervous. We didn't really know what to expect. But as soon as we got into the studio, his desire was just to, to, to bring out everybody's you know, ideas to the table and, and test them. So we really tried a bunch of different things. But again, he wanted to make this record a rock record. And, um, and it was very, it was ideal because you had that, that big R&B world kind of colliding, not really colliding, actually blending with the rock thing. And uh, he was really, really instrumental in making this happen. So uh, it was a very interesting process because the guy was, as I said, he doesn't talk very much. He lets you kind of do your thing. But when it's time to, to change something, he's, like, he stops you and makes you think about it. And that was very interesting. So it made a, a very, the process was very easygoing, very fun. But we, had a lot, we made a lot of, of efforts, actually. There's a lot of work put into this record. And, um, and I, actually, I just listened to the whole tracks like, separately recently for practicing purposes. And uh, I can't believe how many details there are. Like, there's so many little things that are going through this record. And he was definitely very important in making those things happen. Dave is a funny guy. He's definitely, it never is boring with Dave. He likes, you know, likes to have fun, likes to party. Um, and he will definitely make you laugh all the time. But as, as a, it's funny because when you hang out with him, you might even think that this guy, like, oh, my God, he could never be serious. This guy is a party animal who will never stop. And how is he able to, to even pull off any work? But when it comes down to, to working, even if we've been up till 4 in the morning the night before, 
he'll be focused.